So okay. just, just to make sure that they are ready to record. Just wait for them to give the go ahead. So you're using the mouse to click. Okay, so all the jump starters here are wearing this t-shirt. So if you see this t-shirt, that either the trainers or the trainees, uh, and you know, I encourage you to talk to them. Um, you know, if you're interested in joining the program or if you're interested in signing. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for coming here today. My name is Sabrina, and this is my partner Nicole. And today we are going to explain an integral part of testing uh, in JavaScript mocking. Why we use it, when to use it, and how to use it. So uh, I'd like to first focus a little on what testing is. Tests are simply bits of code that run other code and perform assertions. What is an assertion, you might ask? These are a set of conditions that a test must run through and pass before we can confirm that our code meets the expectations of how it should behave. Let's move on to test-driven development. During our Jumpstart program, we were highly encouraged to follow the practice of test-driven development. This means that Nicole and I wrote a lot of tests for our code during our, our entire duration here. As a result, we felt pretty confident about the code that we were delivering in all of our projects. If, for example, we did a refactor of our code, as long as our tests passed when we ran them again, it meant that nothing had been broken. We hadn't forgotten any variable renaming or other silly mistakes. So before I hand the presentation over to Nicole, I'll just give you a brief overview of what we'll be discussing today. The tools we use for testing, jest, and more importantly, why and how we use mocking to achieve the all-important 100%. Thanks, Ravina. Okay, now that we have already learned the importance of tests, right? There's one thing that we should take note of is that JavaScript actually doesn't support testing natively. So what it means is that we need to select a testing framework. So why JEST? Well, JEST is something, the JavaScript testing library that is developed by Facebook. Yes, the same one that create React. So if you use create React app to start your project, good news, it's already set up for you. And next, actually JEST comes with an extensive library of expect assertions, measures, and of course, mocking library. And lastly, if you are like me, often we find bugs at exactly places that we are not looking at. So here, Jess actually got us covered with a built-in coverage report. So it can tell us which script or even which line of the scripts that we miss out the test. Okay, now let's take a look at a basic test. So let's say we are implementing our childhood game of rock, paper, scissors, best of three. So Jess will recognize the file of a test based on the suffix .test.js. And then first of all, we will have a describe block there. It's not a must, but it's a great way to organize your test files. You can group related tests under in, um, one describe block. And then we will have a test or it block. <coughs> Inside, we can describe clearly like what we are testing. And the heart of it all is that inside the expect line. So just like a plain English, it's expect the winner to be Sabrina for our test to pass. Otherwise, it fails. As simple as that. So, so far, so good. But if I could just challenge Sabrina here for a game of rock, scissors, paper. You can pretty much see that the outcome of the, the game depends on each round, what is the outcome. And for the sake of the presentation today, what if we pretend that um, for this get winner, we would be making a network call to a server, a third party <coughs> API, or maybe even a database. So now the outcome of our test depends on the network conditions or probably the database states. This is something hard to assert because it depends on the network conditions, database states, a lot of things. And that is probably not our concerns. That's not ideal because our concerns should be like how our functions interacts with the surface. So how can we isolate our test case away from the rest of the systems? That is where mock function comes because that is we are where we want to replace something that we don't control with something that we do. So, and at the same time, we want to know how many times the function get called, for example, or we want to change the internal implementations. 
set the return value, or in the case of asynchronous operation, we want to resolve or reject promise. Basically, we recognize three types of mocking. The first one is JSFN, the simplest one of all, and we can mock a function using this. And next, we have spy on. Spy actually provides us the information on like how many times the function is being called. And lastly, we have just mock in which we are mocking a module instead of functions. I'm pretty sure that the concept is pretty abstract at the moment for you all. So we hope that we can explain further using a sample walkthrough that we get inspired by Kenzie Dot. Throughout Jumpstart, when it comes to tests, we recognize these three A's, arrange, act, and asserts. It's a great way to organize our thoughts when it comes to testing. So when, uh, first of all, the arrange part, let's say we are dealing with a function called get winner, and this is the part that we are actually making a call to the third party API. So first of all, we want to, let's say, keep the original. And then, because I want to make this isolated away from the rest of the systems, I want to be able to ensure that my winner is always player one. So this is where the mocking comes. And then next would be the act, where I would be, be calling, sorry, my function. And then let's say I invite Sabina to join me here and myself. And because Sabina is player one, he, she should be the winner. So when I expect the winner, it should be Sabrina. This is a very simple mocking. But what is missing here is that there's no way we can tell that we really have our function implementing a best of two out of three because we don't know how many times the function is being called. So the next thing that we might want to try is that we probably use an array to take note of how many times the call was being made. And suddenly you see that our, com our test has become more and more complex. And we can actually just use just function for that. So we don't need an array. We just use this line, just fn. And we mock the implementations to always give us player one as the winner. And then we can test for the winner to be Sabrina. And also we can test that the get winner functions is really being called twice. <coughs> and we can also check that the parameters being passed are Sabrina and Nicole. Another way we can do this is so we can use spy on. So in spy on, again, we can check how many times it's being called. And at the end of it, when we want to return the original functions, we can do a mock restore. The final um, types of mocks will be explained by Sabrina here. Thanks, Nicole. Another way we can implement jest.spyon is with jest.mock. So in our example, we will be moving the, these two li lines over here into a jest.mock, like so, right up here. Jest.mock automatically does mocking for all functions when you mock a module. This means that in whichever file we import utils, it will be replaced with a mock version. So, and then afterwards, finally, if you want to mock this get winner function over here, in several tests, I can refactor this bit of code over here and then I, I will place it into the mocks directory utils over here. And that's all for our co code walkthrough. So before we end, let's do a quick recap of what we've learned today. This is not how you mock in Jess, in case anyone is still confused. <laughs> Types of mocking. Today, we covered the three ways that we can mock in Jess. One, two, and three. I hope you guys remember. Jess dot function where you mock a function. Do take note that this type of mocking is less common as compared to the next two. So the next one, which is Jess dot spy on, does the same thing as just of fn, but allows restoring of the original function. And finally, just.mock 
that mocks functions automatically for all functions when you mock a module. We hope that you all be more confident in using mocks for your unit tests after today. Sometimes there simply is no other way to reliably test a piece of code. If having test coverage is important to you, as it was for us, for a certain part of your code, then mocking would be your only choice of weapon in this case. However, remember to mock appropriately because mocking dependencies means that you're not actually testing your dependencies. This sometimes can reduce confidence in your code. And finally, if you haven't given it a go, do take Jest for a spin. It has an amazing mocking library, and in fact, it's just a great testing library overall. If you'd like, like to check it out, the link for the repository that we went through is over there. Um, or you can approach any one of us, Sabrina or Nicole, if you have any questions. Thank you so much.